Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Hillside Gardener. Uh, today I just want to give you my opinion of LED bulbs versus the T5 or any other kind of grow bulb you may be using. As I mentioned in my first video, I talked about installing these new bulbs. Uh, these are the 4000 lumen LED 40 watt bulbs. I have two of them, you can see there, with the fungus gnat yellow sticky traps. That's part of the game I suppose but here you go uh, my opinion is I love these guys I will always use these and I don't think I'll be going back to the T5's uh, these plants uh, have been transplanted mostly from the seed starter in here brought into cups now for the bigger ones some of the smaller ones gives them a little more room to grow they were getting crowded out and blocked by the light from the, uh, the bigger plants so those guys have their own pots now everything that's left in the seed starting tray has pretty much doubled in size in about the last three days with the increase of light. Uh, like I said, I can't be happy enough with these lights. They have done excellent uh, as opposed to last year with the T5 and the T8 bulbs. Uh, yeah, just my opinion, but the results speak for themselves. I mean, these plants are not leggy. They're very healthy. They're very green. Uh, huge leaves on them. Uh, they're doing great. So yeah, my opinion is I will not go back. I'm using these all the time. I would recommend these wholeheartedly to any of you guys starting your seeds indoors. I mean, just try to pan back, look at this. Every one of those super healthy, super awesome, thick stems. Uh, in transplanting the roots, these roots are massive. These are healthy. Uh, my seed is starting mix this year. I think I got the perfect blend going. I uh, could not be happier about that. So yeah, there you go. Seed starting with LED lights. Totally recommend it. Now, for the uh, bonus footage of today's episode, uh, I'm entailing this, the Darwin effect on my wild, rare chili seed uh, plants. So all of these seeds were started at the same time. Let me bring these down. There's number one. This is my capsicum, I want to say Praetornisium. I probably said it wrong, but there you go. Which is a wild, very rare chili from South America. Healthy little plant. Can't complain. Look at this guy. Capsicum eximium. This thing is, is huge. It's at least compared, it's much taller profile. That's just the genetics of the plant. It is a very tall, spindly, gangly looking plant. But look at that. Plant on the same day, different results. Totally different kinds of leaves. Dark green leaves like this. Lighter green leaves with more of just a Looks more like a plant than it does a pepper plant, honestly. Now look at here. I showed this to you the first time. This was some people liked. These are my Galapagos peppers. That's why, haha, -ha, Darwin effect, Galapagos peppers. So this one here is right here. Kind of focus on it. Uh, not very well, but right there. That guy's pretty much all the way dead. This guy here is dead. And the one seed that survived is still doing fine. Uh, first I thought there might have been a soil issue because... Uh, I don't know, just trying to figure out what was going on with these guys. They just did not look happy whatsoever. But the leaves on this guy are coming back around. Very bushy, kind of very compact right there. But the roots on it were awesome. They're healthy, very thick. So I think this is going to recover. Uh, these two are dead. So there you go. There's the Darwin effect. Uh, strongest survived. Natural selection, whatever you want to say. So this guy has survived the onslaught. And last but not least... Nothing really too impressive here. This is Capsicum Ciliatum, Ciliatum, something like that. Yeah, this is another extremely rare wild chili. Only two of these five seeds sprouted, and for some reason they're very gangly, And but they've been under the same amount of lights and everything else, but these are kind of stretching out a little bit more than I would like. But, uh, you know, I guess that's just the nature of the plant. So, but in big news here, you can't see it barely bright there. There's a third seed that is just barely poking out through the soil. So three out of five of these seeds to sprout, which is great for uh, wild chilies are notoriously very difficult to sprout and to grow in general. So those are surviving. Hopefully of the three, at least one, I guess, to maturity uh, produces enough fruit that I can get some seeds and, you know, share the genetics, pass them around, trade them for other people. Yeah, that's what I like doing, you know, spread the, spread the love around. But there you go. These are the wild chilies. Comparatively, these are all planted on the same day. Salatum, okay? Galapagos, it's lone survivor. I mean, this guy might pull through, probably not. 
this guy wins. There you go. Boom. Healthy plant. Praetornisium. Very nice plant. Very healthy. Very dark green as compared to the other three varieties. The darkest green leaves of the bunch. And then, of course, the tall one, Eximium. So I'm going to have to cut this guy back because it's getting out of control before I put it outside. But, yeah, like I mentioned before, this is just the genetics of the plant. It is a tall, gangly, sprawling little plant. So there you go. Some wild chili update, some grow lights doing awesome. LEDs, I think, are the way to go, especially for me. So that's the update for this week from the Hillside Gardener. Uh, get out there, grow something, plant something random, try something new, and uh, mix it up. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you guys are growing anything random, new, weird, or just unusual this year because everybody grows tomatoes. Everyone can grow beans and corns and cucumbers and marigolds and whatever you want. But you know what? There are thousands and thousands and thousands of plants. If your thing is pepper plants, grow some wild chilies. If you like flowers, get some new ones. If you like vegetables, find some new unusual variety. Don't always go for the same thing because, you know, you only have so many growing seasons left in this world. So mix it up, pick something new, and make sure that your garden is happy, healthy, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Hillside Gardener, we're out.